Hey guys, it's Aaron, and today we're gonna play a game called How Would You Select That? Okay, that's a lie, it's not really a game. Um, this is more of a practice with using the select tool and talking about some of the neat features that are in there that a lot of people don't don't realize that, that they're there. So let's let's hop in and see how this works. Let's go. All right, so simple enough. Uh, when I hit the select key, the default uh, lets me select on something and pick it. Uh, if I have something like a component, I pick on it once and it lights up. If I have loose geometry like this circle or this face or this circle, uh, they highlight once with a click. Clicking twice, double click, 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 is going to get a face and all edges connected to it. While triple clicking connects all connected geometry. So over here I have this little loose top hat geometry. If I triple click anywhere on it, it's going to highlight the whole thing. So that's pretty simple. That's basic fundamental select. Let's talk about doing some odd selections. How, how do we get some of this stuff that's not that simple? So one thing, select window. If I drag, it's going to open a window. Now, if I drag from the left side to the right, I get a solid window, seeing that, that solid unbroken gray line. And anything that falls completely inside this window will be highlighted. You can see there, the ones that I lapped over on the edge didn't get picked. If I go the other direction, I drag this way, I get that dotted line. Any line that this dotted line touches gets highlighted. So you can see those ones that were on the boundary got highlighted as well. So that's a good thing to know because there's times where I might want to go in and say I want one, two, three, four. I just want these four things. I know that if I go like this, even though I'm lapping over three extra squares, they're not going to get highlighted. So that is a good thing to keep in mind, uh, keep an eye on, because that makes it very easy to select from groups. The other option I have is I hit the little down arrow here, I have lasso. Lasso is nice because lasso lets me come in and just pick the geometry I want. So if I want to come in here and just get circles, um, I could, in theory, <laughs> it seems like a lot of work to get the circles, but I could do this. Boom, and there's my circles. Lasso works the same way if I go counterclockwise or clockwise. See that little line connecting how it's dashed right now? That means anything I cross with that would be selected if I go this way, the opposite. So that's an option too. Now something people don't necessarily think about is when they go into select, I'm just going to go back to a regular select arrow and I'm going to pick this one. I'm going to right click on it. Um, one of the things I can do is I can, if I pick this, right, this right here is a component. Go to MC Info. There you go. I have a definition. There's 12 of these in this model. So one of the things I can do is go to select and I can say select all instances. And that's going to get me all those circles. If I right click here, again, same thing, select all instances, and then I get all the squares. Now, let's take this a little bit further. If I look at this and I go, okay, I have all the squares selected, but I really wanted the circles, I can right click, I can go to select, and I can say invert selection. That deselects what was selected before and selects the unselected pieces. That looks nice while I'm zoomed in like this, but if I zoom out, look at what it did. It grabbed this, it grabbed this, anything that was available in the model got selected. So I don't like that. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna grab everything here, right click, Make it a group. When we're in a group, now context changes. So if I select all instances of my square, and then I right click and I say, select invert selection, it's gonna grab the circles, not the stuff that's outside in other groups. It's context aware, so it knows to only reverse selections of the things that are inside the active component or the active session. In this case, it's a group, not a component, but you guys know what I mean. So there's lots of tools for selecting that people don't necessarily think about right off the bat uh, when you come in and, of course, do something like go, okay, I need circles. Okay, click one, hold down shift to get plus, click, click, click. There's nothing wrong with doing it this way, but I'm just saying select's a more powerful tool than that, and it is a lot easier to get selections made than that. Let's talk about raw geometry a little bit. So over here, I had that top hat I was referring to earlier. 
Uh, this is one of my favorite things to do is, is this kind of thing. Uh, some point along the line, something went wrong. And instead of having nice circle, circle, circle here, I have everything's broken. See, these edges are broken all the way around. Uh, same thing here. If I click in here, these edges are broken. These edges are broken. Everything's broken. It's all broken. So I could redraw this. I could manually come in here and select all 24 sides of this circle and then weld it and then do the same thing up here and do the same thing down there. But I don't want to do that. I want to keep it simple, right? So I want to, I want to weld this up without having to spend a whole bunch of time doing crazy stuff. So there's a couple things I do. If I want to get just the top, right? Just these edges right here, uh, I could double click and that would get me everything. And then I hold down shift and unselect that. Now I have just those 24 edges that make up the outside circle. If for whatever reason that's not possible, I could do something like this. I could rotate, so I'm looking at it from the side, and then drag a box like this, and that's gonna get me that same selection. So I could turn that off. There we go, got those 24 sides. What if I wanna get the bottom one, right? So if I click here, if I double click here, it gets me this edge and this face. If I click the face and double click the face, that gets me this edge, this face, and all of these edges in here. Well, that's not necessarily what I want. But what I can do is I can hold down shift, which is going to allow me to click and deselect that face, but that doesn't get rid of these edges over here. So how do I get rid of these edges over here? Well, if I hold down, if I look, let's look at these modifier keys real quick. I'm a Mac, so if you're on Windows, look down at your window because the buttons will be slightly different. But you see, there's three options for modifiers. I have an add slash subtract, I have an add, and I have a subtract. So if I hold down the key combination for subtract, I'm on Mac as shift option, I get minus. So what I could do here is I could pick and turn off each of these edges. That's painful, that's gonna take a long time. But what if I double click on the wall of the cylinder? Well, if I click once on it, it's gonna deselect this wall of the cylinder, which wasn't selected to begin with. If I double click by logic then, it should deselect this edge or this, this wall of the cylinder and any edges connected to it. So these all these edges around here should turn off if I double click right here, and they did. Now I'm back to just the 24 edges around the outside. Now this is nice because if I weld this, this is now one piece. So it makes something like getting, so let's go, I didn't actually weld this before. Uh, let's go double click, take those 24 edges and weld them. Now the only circle I have in here is the middle. So there's a couple things I could do. I could double click here and I could turn off the edge here, edge here, that would get me that. Same thing, I could double click here, turn off here, and then double click up here to turn off the top, that would get me that. Or now that this is a single edge, this is a single edge, I could come in here and do a group select like this. And the only thing, again, dragging left to right, solid window, it's just gonna get those 24 loose edges because there's nothing else that it could select that was totally within this window other than those. And then I could right click and weld edges there too. Now I have one, two, three things and one, two, three things here. So well, if I click select it all, it does tell me the number of edges, but there we go. So now I have a closed circle or a polyline or a curve there. Same thing here, same thing here. So uh, remember that selecting is not just selecting. Sometimes selecting means deselecting. That's a very important thing to recognize. The other thing to remember is that context matters. So it might mean grouping some stuff temporarily. It might mean welding one edge so you can get to another edge. But context is very important. What you're working with is going to change how and what you can select. Select is a great tool. It's, it's a simple tool. Everybody kind of overlooks it as just being, oh yeah, you get the arrow and you click on a thing. Yeah, that's true. But if you use the modifier keys, if you use the lasso along with the standard select, if you use your dragging properly, uh, it's a very powerful tool to do the exact selection you want. And don't forget about context. Like I said, when you go in and, and start selecting or dragging and that kind of stuff, it really matters. The rest of your model really matters. So uh, make sure you're conscious of that, you're grouping stuff properly and working with the geometry you need at the time. If you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. We create several videos each and every week and you'll be notified of all of them if 
you subscribe. Most importantly, leave us a comment down below. Let us know what you think of this. If, did I miss something? Is there a, a select tip that you got that I missed? Let me know about that down in the comments. Or if there's another workflow in SketchUp you think that we should be talking about and we haven't been, let me know that too. If you like making these videos a lot, you'd like to do more, and they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.